For the last month, I've been buying and reselling retro games just to kind of see how it would go if I did it for a month, see what kind of results I could get out of it. And to put it short, I really enjoyed it. I both enjoyed the process and I've enjoyed the games that I got out of it. Now, like I talked about a couple weeks ago, I've been watching a lot of those game collecting, reselling sort of channels. And that's helped keep me educated on what these games are worth because I'm not the type of person who walks into a store and starts looking up the value of every game on the rack. In fact, I try to just blind buy everything and do it all from memory because I feel really awkward about being in a store and checking how much things are worth. It's just weird to me. I've sold probably about 25 and I've probably bought about 35 over the last month, which simple math would indicate I've kept about 10 of them and I'll talk about some of those as well, um, maybe that I feel like I got a pretty good deal on or that I'm looking forward to playing. So first off the bat, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on the PlayStation 3. This is a game that's had a ton of copies printed across so many different platforms, but the PlayStation 3 one is actually worth picking up just simply because as far as I know, the PlayStation 3 version on the disc is like the best one to get. The Xbox 360, the Xbox One version, it's like a port of the mobile port. So it's like a port of a port. So if you want to play it right, I guess you got to play the original, you got to play the PlayStation 3 copy. I'm not that big into San Andreas, I guess, to know. Um, but I picked that up for like $3 in a set of games I picked up at the pawn shop that really got me started because I was paying this flat $3 price on each one and that includes on the game the Bureau XCOM Declassify which isn't worth much but it's a game that I wanted to pick up and play for myself so one that I wanted to add to my personal collection it does play on the Xbox One I think it'll look a little bit better there than playing it on the Xbox 360 I didn't originally realize that it was uh, backwards compatible like that now the kind of niche that I've gotten into is sort of buying sports games for one because I love sports games because I want to keep some of them for myself and for two they're the most undervalued games at any pawn shop or flea market or retro game store of the like so the WWE games right now are getting great returns now that's probably because there's no WWE 2k21 2k20 wasn't any good 2k19 was like it's the best one on the Xbox one but for the most part if you want to play a good wrestling game you go all the way back to 2k14 or get out of the 2k games altogether and go to these which is Smackdown versus Raw so 2008 after fees and shipping and the cost of buying the game itself, I was able to net myself $14 of just 100% profit, which actually took care of all the money I spent at the pawn shop and, you know, was able to refund me for all the games that I picked up that day. So it was a great pickup, great one to turn around and get some profit on. Um, and then I, it is better to get the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 copies if you can. These games were released on the PlayStation 2 as well. And you see here, this was the 360 copy I sold. You take a look at SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, which I also picked up the same day, but on the PlayStation 2. And I got 7 bucks for it after you know, fees, shipping, and all of that. Then an oddball that I'm going to throw in, I made like really less than $4 by picking up Black Ops 2. It was scratched, I took a shot on it, and ultimately it did not work in my Xbox 360, but it did work on my Xbox One. So I was able to make 4 bucks off of it after paying for the game, the fees, the shipping, the whole whatnot, because I sold it as, it's scratched, but it plays on my Xbox One, and you know, here's a picture of it playing on my Xbox One. And that's a possibility. If you have a backwards compatible Scratch 360 game, it may play on Xbox One. Now, a pair of games that I picked up to keep for myself, spent two bucks on SSX, really excited about playing this on the Xbox One. It's compatible with that, it's compatible with the Series X, and it looks great on those next generation platforms. Obviously, being an original Xbox game, there's a lot of content, I think, here, and it's got good multiplayer elements that you wouldn't get out of a snowboarding game that released today, at least in my opinion. And then NFL Street on the PlayStation 2, picked this up for two bucks, really excited about playing this. Obviously, a game that I own and I talk about a lot on this channel, but I only own the original Xbox copy. I sold my PlayStation 2 copy. It was a complete copy, and I kind of regret it, so I bought a PlayStation 2 copy here. Turned out to be disc only because what I was actually looking at was a copy of Left 4 Dead 2 on the Xbox 360. Opened up the case, turned out it was 
NFL Street on the PlayStation 2 for some reason. So I bought that Left 4 Dead 2 case just to get the game that was inside, which wasn't even Left 4 Dead 2. Left 4 Dead 2 is a great pickup, though, because you can trade it at GameStop for like 9 bucks. It goes for like 12 on eBay. It's actually better to trade in, and I thought I was going to be able to pick it up for 2 bucks. So that didn't end up happening, but it turned out all right. So definitely check your discs before you walk out of the store with a case. MVP Baseball 07 is the last college baseball game ever made and one that, you know, just like every last X sports game ever, it's kind of expensive. So I was able to get, um, I want to say about $11, $10.21 for it after fees, paying for it, all of that, cleared 10 bucks an old baseball game. The cashier, I think, was surprised I was even picking it up. It sounded like it had been in the store for a while. But I was able to turn a nice profit off of that. And I also took a chance. This was at another thrift store. Took a chance spending $9 on All Pro Football 2K8. Something that a lot of people would not have done. Because look, it's like a 12, 13 year old sports game. Why am I picking that up for $9? Well, I was able to turn a fifteen seventy one profit off of it after covering all of my expenses just because this game is worth like over $30. I think I sold it for like $34 by the time I got done paying everything and covering that $9 cost of the game. I made like $15, which is great. It's actually one of the most profitable games that I've sold. And then time and time again, like two or three times at this point, I have found copies of WWE 2K14, Found a couple PS3 copies, found an Xbox 360 copy. Seems like it's a game that's notoriously underpriced and is worth in the neighborhood of, well, I've sold them anywhere between $18 to $23. So if you can buy it for a couple bucks like I've done, WWE 2K14 is a great pickup. Now WWE 13, which didn't have a 2K in the name, is not nearly as good of a pickup. I'd stay away from 12 as well. You pretty much have to be at you know SmackDown versus Raw 09, maybe SmackDown versus Raw 10 or older, or WWE 2K14 to really bother picking up these wrestling games. Some of the older wrestling games on the PlayStation 2 don't even have years. Most of the time, those are good pickups. So be on the lookout for wrestling games. If you're into the WWE, or at least I was in like the 90s, early 2000s era of wrestling, I was into it then these are cool games not only to play, but also to flip, so keep your eyes open for those. Thank you guys for watching, I'm Bailey, and I will see you in the next video.